स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया So, uh, the, the first example that I have in this lecture course is, uh, look, let us look at this functional g of y is integral of x naught to x 1 square root of x square plus y square times 1 plus y prime square d x, right. So, j of y is the following quantity, quantity. Notice that j depends on all the three variables x, y and y prime, which means if we were to solve, if we were to solve for the extremal in Cartesian coordinates, look at the complexity of this Euler Lagrange equation. So, in Cartesian coordinate, we see that this is also equal to d d x of square root. Let us just, you know, plug in. So, this is my f this is my f and we see that this is also equal to this times this minus y of square root 1 plus y square divided by x square y square is equal to 0, right. So, so notice that this, car, car, uh, this uh, Euler Lagrange equation is a mess this is extremely difficult to solve. So, this equation is difficult to solve, right. We can still attempt, but there is an easier way out. The easier way out is by the observation that notice that we have the formation of this expression square root of x square plus y square. So, if you recall that in polar coordinate, my radius, my radius variable r is nothing but x square plus y square suggests that we should possibly change this functional in polar coordinates r theta or r phi, right. So, so what I just said is the presence, the presence of square root of x square plus y square suggests using polar coordinates, right suggests using polar coordinates or x is equal to x of phi comma r and y is equal to y of phi comma r, right. Uh, let well we know the explicit uh, expression here in card in polar in polar coordinate x is x is r cos theta let us say r cos phi and in and y is r sin phi, right. So, what we have is what we have is that the Jacobian of x y with respect to r phi is the following uh, well right it is the determinant of the matrix x r y r x phi y phi right. And we see that this is also equal to the determinant of, of cos phi sin phi minus r sin phi r cos phi, right. You see that this is also equal to after find the determinant comes out to be r, right. And I know that I know that this is not 0 because because r is not 0, right. Otherwise, the transformation is bogus. It is it's, uh, not a si uh, non singular transformation, right. So, this clearly shows that the determinant is non singular and hence we are ready to transform our original functional in Cartesian frame into uh, the polar frame functional, right. Okay. So, then so then let us let us further assume like we assume in Cartesian frame further suppose that r is a function of of uh, well well, uh, well, I need to make a slight adjustment here. Uh, well, r is my second variable, 
so I need I what I will do is I will make r dependent on phi right. So, r is dependent on phi right similar to similar to y dependent on x that we had in the Cartesian frame right. So, then then my y prime which is d y d x is also equal to y phi plus y r r phi divided by x phi plus x r r phi right and then once we evaluate we know exactly the relations for y and x in terms of r and phi. So, this is also equal to r cos phi plus r phi sin phi divided by minus r sin phi plus r phi cos cos phi right after just plugging in all the expression for x and y. So, that so that uh, so which means we also have this term in our functional 1 plus y prime square d x after doing all the necessary substitution we will see that this reduces to r square plus r phi square d phi right. So, now which means so students are requested to check that this is this is true for our polar substitution. So, which means which means our new functional our new functional comes out to be k phi r r phi is of the form from phi 0 to phi 1. The first term notice that the first term the first term here is r right and the second term is what we had written in the next slide. So, this is r times r square plus r phi square d phi right. So, we see that this is now completely a function this is completely a function of r and r phi this is completely a function of r and r phi. So, we can peacefully use the Beltrami identity because the explicit dependence on phi is missing in this integrand. So, we are going to use Beltrami identity and reduce thereby reducing our Euler Lagrange equation to first order first order ordinary differential equation ok. So, my Beltrami identity this time is in terms of r and r phi which turns out to be r phi del f del uh, del r phi minus f right and after plugging in the f here we have this f after plugging in in this relation we see that this is also equal to r r phi square divided by square root of r square plus r phi square minus r times r square plus r phi square right. This is also equal to a constant by Beltrami identity let us call this as c 1 right. So, which means then all we do is simplify this expression that we have written. Uh, so, we simplify we see that the simplified expression becomes r phi which is equal to r square root c 1 square r 4 minus 1 right. So, what we see is the following we see that phi is equal to the integral of d r by r times square root of c 1 square r 4 minus 1 right. Okay. So, we are at a stage now all we have to do is to integrate this particular quantity and when we do that I am going to right away give the answer after the integration. So, we are integrating with respect to phi doing an indefinite integration you see that the answer is as follows phi plus c 2 is equal to minus half sin inverse of minus 1 by c 1 r square ok. 
So, so the extremal is in this form, although it is not clear what is the form of this extremal directly from this expression. So, we do a little bit of simplification, we assume another set of constants. So, let nu constants kappa 1 be 1 by c 1 and my constant kappa 2 is minus 2 c 2 right. So, which means which means that let me call this as star my star is now given by the following relation kappa 1 by r square is equal to sin negative 2 phi plus c 2 right. Kappa 1 by r square is sin negative 2 phi plus c 2 right. So, this is also equal to let us just expand this sin of a plus b this is also equal to negative 2 sin phi cos phi kappa 2 plus plus 2 cos square phi minus 1 sin kappa 2 right ok. So, now let us just multiply throughout by r square and notice that r sin phi will be y and r cos phi will be x by our uh, coordinate transformation. So, which means in Cartesian frame in Cartesian coordinates my extremal is as follows. So, kappa 1 is negative 2 x y kappa 2 minus this quantity can be written as cos square phi minus sin square phi right. So, this is this is plus x square minus uh, minus y square of sin kappa 2 right. So, uh, so, uh, so that is that is the extremal that we have found right in Cartesian frame. So, notice that we have now found the extremal in the Cartesian frame without ever solving the Euler Lagrange equation in the Cartesian frame. So, it is a via the polar frame that we are able to uh, we are able to systematically integrate our uh, equation for the extremal ok. So, so doing a necessary performing a necessary coordinate transformation helps to simplify the problem ok and the choice must be judicious ok. So, let us move ahead. So, then the second topic I want to discuss is about the existence the existence of extremal solutions, existence of extremal solutions, existence of the extremal solutions. So, so well uh, just a brief motivation so far we have just written Euler Lagrange without even bothering about whether the solution exists or not we have went ahead and solved the Euler Lagrange equations in all the examples that we have seen so far. However, we have not worried whether in fact even whether even after we are able to solve the Euler Lagrange whether the solution makes any sense or not or whether the constants in in the solution in the family of solutions that we get in Euler Lagrange there there do exist any constants or not which satisfies the boundary condition right. So, what I have just said is the following even if even if the two parameter even if the two parameter family of extremals of extremals are are which are the solutions of my Euler Lagrange equations can be found we are able to integrate Uh, well, there is no guarantee, there is no guarantee that the constants, the constants c 1 and c 2 can be found. There is no guarantee that the constant c 1 and c 2 can be found which satisfies the boundary condition, which satisfies 
the boundary condition right ok ok so so let us look at an example to to highlight what i just said let us go back to our ex example for the geodesic on a plane right uh, well this is my second example of this lecture series so let me call let me recall this uh, example of the geodesic integral from 0 0 to 1 1 so starting at the end point of the square root of 1 plus y prime square dx so this is the geodesic problem or the problem of the shortest path and we know that as i said this is the geodesic on plane problem and we get that the solution is y is equal to x for this problem which was which was a unique solution satisfying the boundary condition given by these points on the integral right however let us look at another example which was also done in our previous lecture uh, notice this particular case j given by integral from 0 0 to to pi 0 uh, of y prime square minus minus k times y square of dx right and we know that the solution to this problem was y of x is equal to c1 times cos square root k of x plus c2 times sin square root k of x right and we have further seen that the solution is going to exist such that it satisfies the boundary condition and there would be two cases if your square root k is is not an integer is not an integer then y identically 0 is the unique solution that we have right and we also saw that if k square root k is an integer is an integer then then y is given by c2 of sin square root k x is given is giving us infinitely many solutions depending on this family of parameters c2 right so we have infinite we have infinitely many solutions described by the parameters c2 right so so depending on we see that we see that in this example we could either have a unique solution or infinitely many solutions right now let us look at another example that we have seen in the in the past lecture that is the example of the catenary right ok so let us recall the catenary example so j of y j of y is integral from x naught to x1 y times 1 plus y prime square dx right so we know that the general extremal of this catenary problem the general extremal of this catenary problem is y of x is equal to c1 cos hyperbolic x minus c2 by c1 we have just found out the solution to this problem in uh, two lectures back right and uh, and well let us now further look at a class of this solution so without loss of generality without loss of generality we assume uh, let us assume the our boundary condition x0 to be 0 and x1 to be 1 right so in that case my y0 will be c1 times cos hyperbolic of minus c2 by c1 just plug in x0 equal to 0 and similarly y1 is equal to c1 times cos hyperbolic of 1 minus c2 by c1 right we just plug in the value x equal to 1 here ok ok so so then the next stage to look at uh, a simplified version of the solution is to change these set of constants right so let us now introduce another set of two constants so let let me say kappa 1 is c1 and kappa 2 is negative c2 by c1 right so in that case in that case my y0 is equal to kappa 1 cos 
cos hyperbolic of kappa 2 kappa 2 and y 1 is equal to is equal to is equal to uh, kappa 1 times cos hyperbolic of of kappa 1 plus kappa 2 right. So, that is how we get this expression. Okay. Then let us further resume. So, again if we go back to the catenary problem here we have the coordinate x naught we have fixed that we have coordinate x 1 fix that as well. Let us also further fix y naught right and we are going to describe y 1 y 1 in terms of y naught right. So, let us also fix this. So, let us assume assume y naught is also equal to 1. So, y 1 will be described in terms of y naught right. So, if we do that we have that y 1 is equal to notice that y 1 is kappa 1, but kappa 1 is y naught well y naught by cos kappa 2 right. So, this is 1 by cos hyperbolic of kappa 2. So, that is my kappa 1 and cos hyperbolic of kappa 1 plus kappa 2 is cos well kappa 1 is nothing but 1 by cos well kappa 1 is uh, kappa 1 is uh, is uh, is cos hyperbolic kappa 2. So, I get cos hyperbolic kappa 2 plus kappa 2 right. So, we see that we, we see that uh, uh, okay. uh, I think this was 1 by kappa 1 in our expression. So, that comes right away from here right. So, 1 by kappa 1 is cos hyperbolic of kappa 2 that comes from this this particular expression here by plugging in y naught equal to 1 right. So, now we have expressed my my solution y 1 purely as a function of kappa 2 one constant function right. Now, if we were to plot this function if we were to plot we were to plot let us say we were to plot uh, f of kappa 2 versus kappa 2 right and I am just showing the solution an approximate solution from kappa 2 uh, from a range minus 2.5 to 1. This plot has been found using standard softwares. It turns out that this curve has exactly one minima let us call this as kappa star right. So, between minus 2.5 to 1 there is just one minima kappa star. So, this question says this question that we have to ask is is there always a solution to this catenary problem. The answer is not necessarily look at the case. So, suppose look at case 1. So, suppose you have y 1 less than f of kappa star or let us go back to our to our uh, well uh, let let us you know look at this this diagram and draw this diagram right. So, notice that in this diagram if my solution falls my solution falls below this value. So, I have well I have this value here which is f of kappa star if the solution falls below this value I see that there will be no solution right y 1 will not be an extremal to the catenary problem. On the other hand if if I have that y 1 is identically equal to f of kappa star then I have a unique solution to my extremal problem given by the value of kappa star the constant. On the other hand if I have y 1 greater than f of kappa star we see that there are two solutions possible we have two solutions possible and it turns out that there will be out of this two solutions one will be a minima and one will be a maxima right. So, we do not know which one is minima or maxima, but later on when we introduce the second variation or the sufficient conditions for Euler for the functionals we will see we will revisit this catenary problem. 
to show that one of the solution is indeed a minima and the other is a maxima right so conclusion the conclusion is as follows so we conclude the discussion on this topic and the the conclusion we draw is as follows that even if even if our analytical analytical solutions of euler lagrange equations analytical solutions of euler lagrange equations are not available are not available it turns out that the existence uniqueness well the existence uniqueness uniqueness criteria highlights the existence uniqueness criteria highlights highlights uh, the range highlights the range of special special parameters highlights the range of special parameters uh, cont containing containing regions of either no solutions or unique solution or infinitely many solutions right right that is what we saw in the above example of the catenary so at least we can find regions of the parameter space where we have to search for our for our uh, uh, solutions to the euler lagrange right so existence uniqueness is also an important uh, important issue to consider while looking at the solution to the euler lagrange equation okay so 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 let us 